Hey there. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome, depending on where in the world you're watching from. My name is Brenda Muller, and I want to welcome all of you for joining and watching today. This is my show, which I call Enthusiastically Self-Employed, where I bring on experts. We have Chef with us here today to talk about business and strategy tips for those of you who are self-employed, whether you are a coach, consultant, speaker, and or author. And I'm delighted to have with me here, Shop, as we're, I'll introduce you in just one moment, but as we're meeting, um, I would like to ask our audience, you see, I've got a ticker running below here. Let us know if you're seeing the live stream right now, if you could. We're live on three networks. We are on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Instagram. And Shep and I were doing some prep here before we got started and we were experiencing just a little bit of an audio lag. And I'm hoping the video is crisp and clear wherever you are watching this from. So if you are watching, please do me a favor and drop a comment below. Let me know if the audio and the video are coming to you loud and clear. I'd love to see the word loud and clear coming into that here. And as we are waiting for those comments to come in, I want to ask Shep to take a moment to introduce yourself. Now, Shep, you and I met at a training I did for your team at Rose Pest Solutions back in November. We had a side conversation. I realized you were really good camera presentation. Why don't you come on my show? So for those two yet, please take a moment, Shep, and tell us a bit about yourself. Sure, Brenda. Uh Shepardigian. My name is, uh, uh, I go by Shep. My government name is Mark Shepardigian, but only my mother calls me Mark. So uh, it's, it's, it's distinctive, but it suits me. I work for Rose Pest Solutions, where we run the programs that uh, protect America from pests and other vermin. Uh, so urban pest management is what I do, but as a uh, as a uh, as vice president of technical services, which is a very proud title, uh, I'm in charge of the technology to keep us at the leading edge of pest management technology, which means I do a lot of uh, training and presenting. So I find myself frequently having to uh, get my point across, which generally lends to things like this. Well, great. Well, thank you for that. And thank you for all the work that you and your team do to keep all of us pest free. That's great. And it's kind of ironic when we were talking about bringing you on the show, I said, we're really, this, this show is really for people who are self-employed. And I know you frequently speak on, on at conferences and in events. And the topic today, you can see right above us, it, this little audio glitch thing that's happening and we we practice and we rehearse and we agreed that it, it looks like the video is clear. So we're going to imagine that there's no hiccups and glitches, but we know there's a little bit of a delay from the time that I say something until the time that Shep hears it. So we're going to bake that in as we go throughout today. But Shep, right now, what I'd like to do is turn the floor over to you and just let's get started. What tips do you have for our audience for those that are looking to do more presenting over video? Well, there are a few tips. I, I do confess that it may be a little rudimentary for some of you and maybe nothing new. But for me, uh, I had to learn much of this the hard way. So as a as a video presenter and ever since COVID and the uh, the Zoom revolution, we uh we find ourselves presenting ourselves digitally. And of course, uh, what we really want to do is make, make our biggest impact with the message we have. So what kinds of things can we do to improve that? You don't have to watch a whole lot of uh, YouTube or other uh, streaming events to realize there's a lot, a lot of people who aren't very good at this. And it's a, it's a different platform than speaking live. And I can tell you, if you're going to present live, you better be prepared to present to a to your laptop, to a monitor. It is so different than presenting to a live audience. It's a it, it can be incredible. But there's a few things you can do. Number one, remember this is visual, so it's all about what it looks like. 
And the first thing you want to do is make sure that your background is proper. Now, they have a lot of these cool uh, avatars and uh, digital backgrounds and crazy filters that is not for presenting. Uh, there's a whole, what, a whole ethos around uh, attending meetings digitally, but concealing where you really are, that kind of thing with digital backgrounds or blurring your background. If you're going to do your best at getting your message through, don't blur about, use the background behind you. And pay attention to it because it makes a difference. Perhaps you've uh, seen the news when they have correspondents coming in and they always seem to have very interesting bookshelves behind them where they're just packed with all these books. And have you ever found yourself looking at the books and deciding, uh, have I read that? Did he write that or she write that? Saw one just yesterday. All the books had the little yellow used book tag on it. He set that up just for the shot. I don't recommend using books. Uh, your background should be uh, not uh, bland like this. This is bland. I didn't do this on purpose. We had another place we were going to do this, but the technology prevented. So this is where I am. Either way, uh, your background should be uh, interesting, but not more interesting than you. So don't put stuff on there that they're going to like spend their time reading instead of listening because that'll detract from uh, from what you're trying to do. Uh, the other thing is uh, uh, background color is important uh, because this is all going to this is all going to come down to lighting. Uh, you need to be well lit. Uh, cameras work on light. And so uh, the more light you have, the better focus you get and the better exposure. And your background may may influence that. Uh, a neutral background is best. That's why I got this one. It's pretty neutral. If you have a really light background, light reflects off of it. And then it's like being backlit, which is bad. Don't let yourself get backlit or you become silhouetted. Or you lose the definition in your face and you become this, this blurry moving face on a uh, properly exposed background. So... Uh, dark backgrounds aren't aren't too bad um, if unless your lighting is harsh and then you wash out. But it's always good to check that first. So uh, so what you do is pay attention to your background so that you're you're well lit and uh, and it's not distracting. The best place to set up if you don't have a best place is a studio. If you don't have that in front of a window so that there's a window right behind the computer you're staring at that the uh, nothing like natural daylight to light you up it doesn't work at night so if you're going to do this at night you might want a different uh different uh lighting source on lighting sources you can get all kinds of lights. just turn the light on do remember uh and now with led this is really important uh there is temperature to light different lights have different light temperatures uh, it's a little confusing because they give it to you when you buy the lights in degrees. And now, hang on, the higher the degrees, the cooler the light. What's up with that? Who decided that? That's just the way it is. The uh, So warm light is uh, lower degrees. Cool light is higher degrees, but you want cooler light. It's a uh, it's a little it's a light white blue kind of light, and it shows you in a it shows you um, in a more in more true colors. The warmer light tends to make everything golden and uh, sun drenched and uh, gooey. But you you modify the light so you like the way you look best because after all that's you out there and you wanna you wanna put your put your best for, forward. You wanna. Show yourself in the in the best light. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, background. You want to make sure that it, that it's always looking good and that uh, and that the camera's working well. Um, understand that there are different cameras out there, um, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute before I run out of time. Uh, but do do be sure that uh, that you're properly exposed and that you're looking good. 
sound is also important. And while many laptop, most laptops have microphones that are passable, some are very good. You can't beat some of the external microphones that uh, that are really pretty uh, um, pretty reasonable price wise. And and do remember if if you're only going to do this like once, I'm not sure how much extra equipment I would invest. But if you're going to do this on a regular basis, if you are going to be invited to speak in places digitally, a few dollars spent on an external microphone might have a lot to do. And you've heard some of the people who who phone it in and you get the tinny sound like I like they're coming through a tin can on a wire. You want a good microphone. And so get one that uh, get one that does well, that suits you well so that you know how it's going to work. And then. Uh, you'll have to trial them so so you know how it works. <laughs> Otherwise, I got this great microphone, but I can't make it work. That's it. It's not not much help. Um, getting your sound right is uh, is uh, usually a matter of practice, um, and it doesn't take too long before you figure out where to put it, that uh, where to put the microphone, so that it's picking you up properly and and not picking up background noises. Uh, while you're doing this, do keep a bottle of water handy. You know, you have one of these uh, because you never know. And you, yeah, see, you might get a tickle in the throat. A good external camera or a microphone, microphone comes with a cough button. It's a little self mute thing on the button. And so all I have to do is push it and you'll there and you push it back and it turns back on. Isn't that great? The, the, what that's for is if you had to like cough, people don't know what to do. Uh, oh, watched a uh, watched a colleague present recently with a with a bad infection, and he gutted his way through it. I would recommend you don't do that. Uh, reschedule if you must, but don't go on there uh, every few seconds having to. Uh, clear your throat and do other, do, do things like that. So use the cough, cough button if you have to cough, because it's better than muting the, uh, you could mute the microphone if you don't like on your computer, it just takes a whole lot longer. You can mute an external mic really quickly and then Jeff, let me jump in. I am not hearing any audio at all right now. And I'm just testing on my nope. phone. How about now? And I'm not hearing any audio coming through on my phone either. Okay. Now Where I Where did I leave you. off? Jeff? There we go. Let me jump in. Where did you uh, lose me? I am not sure because our audience has been... I, I heard you talking about um, where were we at? We were talking about microphone quality, and then the audio went. It was at the point where you were talking about the coughing on the microphone. You muted yourself, and then you came back on, and then it muted for me entirely, and I didn't hear anything after that. So I'm a little concerned that we may not have that, heard anything from that point. That, so what a let's, what a let's good segue. A little bit. 
And I want to ask our audience, thank you so much for your patience. Go ahead. What a great segue into the most important point I'm going to bring out. So we'll write this down. Don't do anything for the first time on live camera. Rehearse. And so if you are going to use the cough button and be very cool and say, you know, I got a cough button here and it'll just video and the, or the audio and come right back on, you better make darn sure that you can turn it back on because if it slips and you go back off, then you'll be silent like I just was. Oh, sorry. But it makes the point. If uh, if you if you're sure this is going to work, then you should be happy to rehearse it once or twice. Because man, things just never work the same when you're when you're in the moment when you're uh, when you're live and and uh, and online. Uh, we were talking about I was talking about light when I got uh, that. If you don't have enough light, there are things you can do to put more light on. Uh, you can. Uh, you can use a big white a big white board. I have a, I have a big white board here. Uh, it's a uh, it's oh, that's a good home core. But if you have a white board, if you're sitting in a shadow and you want more light to come in, you can set a white board up there and shine a light at that, and uh, and that'll that can help you out. Or you can uh, if you if you were doing this all the time, a couple of couple of bucks, you can. Uh, they're like 30 or 40 dollars you can get these little uh photography camera lights and practice setting those around so that you so that you get what you so that you get what you want um oh let's see once you've done all that it's up to the technology and uh you never know what the technology is going to do like if your host disappears that kind of thing happens with regularity uh, and sometimes there's nothing anybody can do about it. So you learn to uh, you learn to go to punches and go right. See, there we go. She's back. Um, that's the uh, that's the the beauty of being prepared for for what's about to happen. Um, as you uh, as you're setting yourself up, the the cameras on your uh, on your laptop. If that that thing's going to be showing you, make sure it's a good camera. I'm used. This is my personal laptop. My business laptop has a uh, has the camera, uh, camera, camera, camera. Instead of up here, it's mounted down at the bottom of the screen, which uh, uh, is affectionately referred to as a nose cam because it puts you in a perspective. <laughs> Maybe you don't want to be remembered like that. So uh, do do pay attention. And the other thing is aspect. If you got the laptop on your desk and you're sitting way above it, it's a low angle. You find you're happier with you uh, with looking at you straight on. So I have my laptop set up on a box so that I'm just about eye level with uh, with the camera. That's an important thing to do. The other thing is to uh, remember that there's a that there's a tilt, and you can tilt it. Oh, this is the uh, this is the famous uh, iceberg view of people who uh, who are on video chats and stuff, and they think this is just fine. And sometimes it's like this. Don't do that. Make sure that you are filling up the frame, and if it looks funny to you, it. Frequently, the platforms will reverse your frame so that um, you point one way and the image of you on the screen is pointing the other way. And that's, that's, that's not a bad thing. It's just showing you what you look like to your audience. So, uh, yeah, cameras uh, up and down. Oh, and um, uh, back and forth. See, sometimes... You can change what, what's in your background just by swiveling your laptop. And sometimes that's the right thing to do to really uh, um, control how your background looks. Now, uh, you should try all this on your own before you start. There's a couple ways to do that. Um, I either do it with like a Zoom empty meeting. Um, you can do that on Teams. You, you start a meeting with nobody invited, but you and then it puts you on there and you get to adjust the audio. You get to adjust your video. You know what you're going to look like. If you don't have any of that, 
your cam your uh, your camera function. There's a camera app on your uh, on your uh, computers. Most computers have a camera app that will go to the camera on the computer. So you just type in the uh, search uh, in for uh, for the app says camera, and it'll come up. You turn it on. And then you can see what you're going to look like in that camera. It helps you adjust the light. It helps you adjust the uh, um, the background and those kinds of things. One other thing is when you're done, turn off the camera. If you just click away, you will find that your platform, Zoom or uh, StreamYard or uh, anything else, won't be able to access your camera because it's being used. And then what you'll get is one of those, oh, my gosh. My camera's not coming out, and I don't know why. That's why. So be sure to turn that thing off after you've used it. And uh, just just a matter of taking a little time, doing a little rehearsal, a little practice, and that'll that'll get you there. There's still a lot of things that uh, that you'll want to pay attention to as you actually present. But I don't think we have time for all of that. So this this should get us there. How do, does that does that make sense? Are there questions I can answer? Awesome. And good timing. We'll actually segue into our Q&A. And during the session, I've actually been in help with StreamYard trying to do a little bit of troubleshooting here. I do not let these situations ruffle my feathers. I am an experienced professional. I've done many of these live streams before. I know the issues that we're having are not typical. I'm hoping my audience is um, still watching and bearing with us as we're going here because we are gonna move into some Q&A. But even if we're not getting a lot of Q&A from the audience live, Steph, I do have a few questions for you because you're, you're, you're such a pro, first of all, and I wanna thank you for your patience and your understanding and working through the issues. Do a prep call, Jay Shep and I did do a prep call yesterday to try to work through some of the issues and then we Join 10 minutes before. I always do this with every single guest. I join, try to make sure audio and video, video and everything are working fine. Um, the individual that I'm chatting with is giving me some things. A little while ago when I went off camera, they suggested I close everything off on my laptop. I'm not even having a second window with my LinkedIn Live um, where I can see comments. So I closed everything off and refreshed my page, which is when I refresh it kicked me off and then back in. Now, the beauty of live streaming through StreamYard is that once the live stream starts, it's hosted on StreamYard. So if I lose audio and drop out on video, Shep keeps going. If, if Shep were to lose audio or video, I would keep going. So as long as there's at least one of us connected to the live stream, the live stream keeps going. And this all as ties back. I mean, it's actually... Not a great thing that is happening today, but when we're presenting over video, the reality of the situation is that sometimes you're at the mercy of technology and you can plug in on the Wi-Fi with an Ethernet cable like I've done on my laptop. You can get into the live chat with support through StreamYard, which I've been doing. You can do not one, but two quick calls with your guests, try to work out the issues beforehand. But sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where technology will glitch. So I am keeping my my fingers crossed here that the live stream, the recording of the live stream will be smooth and it will seem actually like, why was Brenda talking about any of these things? Because we're not seeing those issues. But I'm thinking there may be some hiccups that are occurring, Shep, for two reasons. One is I'm really not seeing any comments coming in. The only comment I, I saw from YouTube was from Diana. And I'm looking on my phone and I see that Diana also commented on LinkedIn, but StreamYard's not bringing in the comments from LinkedIn. So that's why I always like to have a backup to see my comments from my guests. We'll look at those again later, but I do have a few questions for you, Shep, if it's okay on some of the points that you covered. Would that be okay with you? Oh, yeah. Okay. So from the time I said that to the time that he nodded his head, yes, was about seven seconds. So we've got, even got a little bit of a delay between my stream and when he hears me, which is probably what was happening when he was talking. And that's why I muted so that I normally make these a little bit more conversational shop. 
Um, in this case for today, we let Shep have the floor to do the talking. So we'll hopefully get all of this worked out. But I want to ask you a few questions. And you you had mentioned in here to be intentional about your background, not bland, but not too busy. Now, um, when we're in, you know, when we're in a, a situation where we are presenting over video and we're presenting to an audience, um, I sometimes get bored as a presenter looking at the same background of myself over and over and over again. So sometimes I will stage like I've got a plant over here, another little flower here, photo of my book. Is it okay to have some items in the background as long as they're intentional or would you err more towards cleaner overall? Oh, I I think uh, between the uh, between the two backgrounds, yours is just about perfect. Mine's a little bland, <laughs> but you, uh, you certainly have done that well. You've got you've got enough in the background that says uh, comfortable, clean place to present without uh, so much that people are going to try and read the books on your shelf or uh, pay more attention to that than you. That's a you are putting the good example on how to best do a background. All right, great, thank you. And you also shared a tip to be intentional about lighting, to be well lit. Now, and I, I appreciated when you were talking about microphones, you said if you're just doing a one-off thing, it might not be worth investing in a microphone because I think those can be a bit more expensive than lighting kits, if I'm not mistaken. But what do you think? When should we think about investing in a ring light or a lighting kit, in your opinion? Wow. Um, when, uh, when you know you're going to be doing more than a couple of videos coming up, that's when it's time to invest and look at the value of what it is you're going to be saying and the audience you're speaking to. How important is it to you to put your very best foot forward if, if it is, and if you're going to be one of many, you want to be the best. And the way to do that is to have the best audio and the best picture. Uh, that'll uh, that'll get you to stand out right away. So if if you're going to be, I don't know, two, three, four a year, that would be that would be enough to make it worth it. Remember that the most expensive thing you own is a thing you paid five bucks for and never used. It if you look at it in dollars per use. Uh, that's how you uh, you'll get a much better idea of what to buy and how how good to buy. You should for a, I don't know a hundred bucks. You should be able to get a really good microphone for fifty bucks or around more or less or less. You should be able to get a a pretty good lighting unit to help you with lighting those kinds of things. As you uh, once you become what more proficient, more professional, you might want to really invest in some studio uh, studio equipment, especially if you're going to do uh, a regular regular broadcast, regular podcast. That's when you really want the good equipment. So you sound your best and look your best. All right. Awesome. Have you noticed how I've been able to anticipate when Shep is done talking and he also anticipates he needs to add a little bit of space for me to ask my next question? We are true professionals, my friend. We do not get ruffled up when these things happen. We're making it, it our way through. Uh, my next question for you, Shep, was involving the big whiteboard. And I think the point you were making is to reflect more light on you. So are you saying mount the whiteboard in front of you so the light is bouncing back? Or can you talk to us a bit more about how you use a whiteboard to help with lighting? Oh, absolutely. If you've got a big white wall and if in front of you, and you aren't able to get enough light, you just, uh, you will see the light reflect right off the back. Now, I use mine for double duty. Uh, um, in in other uh, video uh, presentation tips, you need to know what you're going to say, and if you're going to read it, you shouldn't be looking like you're reading it. So what you might want to do is uh, get your notes and tape them to a big white board. If you're going to talk about the whiteboard, you can turn it around and say, it's just a white board, but really it's where all my notes are. So I don't forget anything. And uh, if I have this posted right in front of me, 
the light shines right back and it can really make the difference between me sitting in shadow and getting enough light to make a good video. That happens at, uh, there's a place at our office that I often have to uh, to be on video from. And it's it's a really unfortunate place for where the, there's a backlight that uh, leaves me shadowed. So I just set up a whiteboard and uh, turn on an auxiliary light and it, uh, it lights things right up. All right, it went in and out a little bit there. So I'm gonna to try to watch the playback and see if I can get the full description there. We'll, we'll make it happen. We'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of move on um, and we'll start to kind of wrap up our conversation here today, Shep. And what I wanna start with is, I know that we're here talking about your expertise as a speaker, but if people, you, you mentioned in the beginning, you work for Rose Pest Solutions. So if they're interested in learning more about Rose Pest Solutions, can you give us a high high level overview of how they can get a hold of you and, and what are the services that your organization provides? Oh, of course, because I'm never uh, beyond giving a shameless plug. Rose Pest Solutions provides uh, pest management for uh, residential as well as commercial properties. So wherever there's pests, you can give us a call. We, uh, we are a full service pest management firm. So anytime you have uh, any kind of pest, we're able to deal with that. And do you work with both residential as well as businesses, or is it mainly on the business side? We're predominantly a commercial company, but we do have a healthy residential uh, clientele. So we do both. And uh, we also do uh, like property management, so multi, uh, multi unit housing. So what is that? Is that commercial or is it residential? Well, it's residential that comes in commercial or something like that. So we do everything. And if All you right. wanted them. Great to free, know. And go ahead. If you're looking for a really great career, you might enjoy urban pest management. We go everywhere. We see everything. Just a tremendous opportunity to, uh, to help people out. And to, if you like meeting a lot of people and you don't like sitting at a desk, that would be a, that would be a great uh, alternative career for you. Just saying. That's awesome. And so many of your team members, when I did the training for you guys back in um, November, so many of your team, mem team members have been with Rose Pest Solutions for years, a significant amount of time, which I, I think is really a testament to the culture and the work experience that you provide there and, and the stability of an organization. And you've hired of uh, pest management solutions, I think, out there in the industry. Right now, I'm showing with you on screen, uh, Shep's profile. On, and as I'm showing that, Shep, could you remind us, are you open to connecting with individuals if they want to connect with you on LinkedIn? I am. I uh, I, um, I can't, I wouldn't say I connect with anybody. I have a lot of connections who aren't pest management related. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm open and available for whatever, however I can be helpful. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Shep, so much. And thank you for your patience And as we were trying to work through some of our, our issues with our audio and our technology today. As you and I both know, sometimes technology plays nicely and other times technology is, is hiccuping. And the new Shep is I value your time and your expertise. So if for any reason this video did not stream and we weren't able to to capture the interview, what I will do is we'll probably not do a live interview, but maybe I'll interview you separately. And then we'll just have a video upload that I'll share with our audience at a, at a later date because you had so many great tips today. Of course. So I'll let you know about that. How does that sound, Shep? All right. And any final comments for us before we wrap up on presenting over video, Shep, that you'd like to share with our audience? I, I think that ought to about do it, but uh, give it your best shot. Keep smiling and you're going to do well.
All right. Awesome. Hey, you got to smile through it. Smile through the tech issues and things like that that you have. As we wrap up today, I want our audience want to play back. If you did enjoy this discussion, we'd love it if you could share the video along. If you're watching this on LinkedIn, as soon as the live stream stops at the bottom of the video, there'll be a little share icon. You can click to share this video as a LinkedIn post. It's a really great thing to do if you have not yet shared on LinkedIn this past week, this past month, or maybe even in the past year, and maybe tell people why they should watch the video if there's some great tips that were helpful for you. If you tag Shep and I in your post, we will comment back, use a little at sign to tag us in on there, and we will look for that. With that said, I hope that all of you that are enthusiastically self-employed are walking away with some great tips about presenting over video today. And I want to thank Shep for joining me. So thank you so much, Shep. Thank our audience. And you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.